What is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we're continuing our sort of educational course, self-educational course on the Canon C200. And we're moving into post-production. The workflow, how I grade the footage, um, working in DaVinci Resolve, working with LUTs, working with color temperature, um, working with the LUTs that come with Resolve, working with LUTs that I've made and basically how to get a good image out of the camera that you're happy with without having to start from scratch every single time you sit down at the computer. So a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I'm working on a 2016 iMac. I have my Wacom tablet here. With the C200 footage, with these kind of clips, I tend to work straight off the card, meaning I don't transfer the CRM files onto a hard drive, either internally or solid state or externally or the cloud. I just work with the raw file. I just work straight off the raw file, still on the CFast card. I get a grade that I'm happy with, and then I output either a 2K or 4K ProRes 422 file that then becomes my new master that I edit with. You know, unless it's mission critical, unless I'm doing a big job for an important client that may need extensive regrading somewhere down the line, I just tend to. I just work off my two 512 gig CFast cards um, that have an hour of space between them um, in 4k raw and so far it's worked pretty well without further ado here we are in the c200 post-production phase so here we are in davinci resolve gonna go across the media tab down to my cfast card gonna grab a couple of clips here me looking kind of grumpy one here let's change it to suit the um, frame rate. Now I'm gonna highlight these new timeline from selected clips. Got my get rid of my audio, zoom in, find a good keyframe. Nope. Find a good decent enough keyframe. Shorten that. Same with this guy. Don't you love camera tests? The reason I want to do this is so I can go between them um, without having to hunt through. So I have this guy, I have this guy. Now that I have, I know I can get to them with these arrows. I'm going to take off my clips, take off my timeline, even take off my gallery for now. So I have all this nice real estate and I can get between my clips with the um, next clip and the past clip. Little shortcuts here. So we'll start with the exterior one. See down here in the waveform, both of them are exposed pretty much with the skin tone at around 50 IRE. So put the, the skin tone halfway on the histogram, exposed around 50%. And now if I um, if I go down to 3D LUT, Ari Alexa, log C to 709, that's a pretty good place to start. Um, I believe that the C log 2 is based on log C, which is uh, the way Alexa shoots. Um, looks a little washed out, looks a little um, desaturated, so let's fix that. Let's put our saturation up to, say, 77. Let's push our contrast up to um, 1.2. That's, that's not a terrible look. That's really nice, nice roll off. If I wanted to, this little hot spot on the top of my skin, I can go over here to the um, logs and just turn the highlights down. And you'll see if I undo that, it just takes a little bit of punch out of this highlight there. It kind of blends it in with my very gray hair. So we're going to hit uh, option one, and that'll that'll store up here in the gallery. And anytime we want to apply this look to a clip, we can just hit command one to get it back. So that's the Ari Alexa LUT applied um, to C-Log 200 footage and it comes out looking pretty good. It comes out looking pretty good. Let's go across to the uh, the other clip. Command one to apply our LUT. Um, this one's a little warmer so I'm going to go over to the temperature node here. Pull this back just a little bit um, and now I have the same look without having to repeat all my steps. I have the same look on the other clip. That's how you use the native LUTs in DaVinci Resolve to grade footage. I'm going to show you some of mine. Uh, so we're going to go up here to Resettle Grades and Nodes. 
So if I go into my 3D LUTs here, I've got three engine, three Crimson Engine LUTs. The first one is Ether, which is, let's call that option two. And you can see how compared to the um, compared to the native Alexa LUT, uh, it's a little it's a little more subtle. I've done a little bit more to the skin, done a little bit more to the background. But it's it's a pretty nice place to start. Um, the second one is Apollo, which is more of a film um, emulation. Let's get the temperature right. It's a little too blue. Let's warm that up. So what I like to do is use this. And um, even though we're not using the raw tab, the way that um, DaVinci Resolve 14 works with the CRMs that the C200 produces is it's it's looking, it's debayering the clip um, with this with this uh, temperature node. So it's the same, you're getting the same result out of the temperature here than you would be if you were using the raw tab and the color temperature here. Maybe in a future version of Resolve we'll get a proper color temperature, but for now um, this is what we have and this is what we're working with. So let's set that somewhere between you know, the warmth of my skin and the blue of the background. And uh, that looks pretty good. Actually, let's say 210. Let's call that option three. So then we have the first look, the second look, and the third look. And our final one here is a much punchier, much more cinematic kind of light that I'm calling Aries. You can see how it's a little dark, but that's totally fine. What we'll do is use the offset to pick this up a little bit. Again, fix our temperature, call it option four. So we've got the default Alexa LUT, Ether, Apollo, and Aries. And you know you can add nodes before you can have option S, and you can do what I was talking about before, and um, you know maybe add a window, a circle to the middle of the face, diffuse this out nice and wide, come over here, bring this the center of it up, or we can go over to and add some sharpening, drag this down to say 46. Um, if we wanted to, we could. Add another serial node here. Maybe add some gradients on either side. Another gradient here. And then drop those down. Maybe just the blue channel. Bring that up again. That's too much. Um, and we just want to hit Apple D to see what each one of these is doing. So what I'll tend to do is get a look I like here on the whole clip, then go to deliver, output this, um, and then edit it in Premiere. Something people might not know there is if you, you, you want to get rid of these little black bars, um, you want to go over to your zoom tab here, push in. Um, that's the great thing about working with 4K is if you're going to 1080p, you can crop in all the way to my very close face. You have to customize uh, each shot. There's no such thing as a LUT that works all the time in every shot. Um, each one will need to be customized because the color temperature is minutely different. And the way that my LUTs work at least is they're looking for highlights, they're looking for mids, and they're looking for the darks, and they're giving each one a sort of a different, um, a different contrast, a different temperature. So you have to help them out by letting them know what the, color the, the native color temperature of the clip is. I tend to like keeping skin, graded skin tones uh, under under 75. I think otherwise you're just sort of bleaching them out. Getting a cool look um, in both of the clips now and getting a nice cinematic image um, with a very short amount of time. So that's my workflow. That's how I get a good image out of the camera. Uh, you can buy that LUT pack for, I think it's $8.99. Um, there's a link in the description. You can get a perfectly great image um, with the RE LUT that comes with Resolve. You don't need to buy these. Uh, that's just something that I've created over time. You know, you spend $6,000, $7,000 on the camera. Maybe you spend another $10 to get an image that you're happy with. This is just another little experiment of mine on how this channel can start to support itself and how I can do more content. I really appreciate your support and more videos like this coming soon.